Good afternoon, all. Um, I won't keep you long today, so uh, we'll be out of here nice and quickly. But my thanks to Catherine. Um, on behalf of myself and my colleagues uh, from 7, 8 and 9, um, I know Andrew was here this morning, I believe Siobhan couldn't make it, unfortunately, and sends her apologies. Uh, but I think today just proves, um, you know, I mean, first of all, uh, my willingness to contribute to the learning set here for everybody, but also shows, I think, the, the winds of change that are behind us in terms of the, the collaboration and partnership that's happening across all the areas nationally. And I know, sort of, in speaking to Catherine earlier, the, the other workshops have been really attend, attended really well as well, which is fantastic to be able to say that as well. And the credit to everybody who's here in the room today. But I suppose just in giving a summary of the day so far, um, and, and just to sum up uh, for people, obviously Gina this morning um, um, provided an overview of how the recovery framework and the, the recent launch of that and how uh, that will be implemented in, in, in mental health across the areas. Like, I, I think it's fair to say, certainly from my perspective, it's not an overnight thing. It won't happen overnight, it will take time. And, you know, it'll take time because, you know, in terms of us all working together to make sure that we implement it correctly, because, again, the service user is at the, the centre of, of everything we do. Marina and Margaret um, spoke then afterwards about the, uh, I think it gave a fair reflection of a personal narrative from Margaret as well about uh, the co-production and her involvement. And also Marina spoke of the meaning for her about um, recovery and practice. And I think that those two key elements, I think, showed both sides of the, the equation in terms of what we're trying to do here. Margaret, um, Diana and Catherine, Katrina uh, are mental health engagement leads, and Margaret is sick of listening to me, um, um, and uh, said, I'm only too delighted to have Margaret in my area. I know that for a fact, and I've uh, said that at our Connecting for Lunch the other day as well. But I think it gave an, uh, the overview of the service provider experience um, that we have, uh, and I think Rita Kelly gave her aspect of things as well. In the afternoon session then, um, myself, I was at the, the co-production um, uh, workshop, and um, it was, the, the discussion was very interesting, um, I have to say. We had Michael and Kevin there um, effectively asking us and challenging us, what is co-production? You know, and um, we had a, great discussion on the advantages and disadvantages of what co-production is um, and it was so interesting to hear both sides of again the story there in that one but I think again in in taking something away from it myself is a how do we support service users in terms of them being able to contribute and I've had this discussion with Margaret as well in our mental health engagement lead in terms of how we support each other to enable us all to do our jobs properly um, the other bit was, and that uh, I think Kevin brought up as well, was little get-togethers together. Service users, staff members, I think he was talking about a jogging event, things like that. I'm going to get Paul Brophy out jogging now in Kildare soon, <laughs> uh, and I look forward to that. Uh, you know, um, we'll, we'll do it together. We'll do it together, Paul. You're here now. If that's going to happen, we're doing it together. Um, um, that's co-production right there in a nutshell. We also had Martin, um, our old romantic, I suppose. Um, <laughs> and I don't know how many times I've listened to Martin, and I said to somebody afterwards uh, there, you never cease being amazed of, uh, and uh, sort of listen to Martin. Every, every presentation that he gives is different, even though it seems to be the same slides, but every <laughs> message that he gives is different. And you always get something from Martin. I mean, I haven't seen the Lucas A bottle one in a while, but <laughs> it brought me back to my own sick bed as I was a kid. But, and again, my own recovery. But I think there is a clear message in that as well, in taking the Lucas A bottle. And the way I took it was, the Lucas A bottle was on a journey. We're all on a journey together about how it changed, you know, how the branding has changed, how the service has changed, how we're moving from an institutional model to a more community-based model to a more recovery-oriented model. You talk about resistance being useful, and I couldn't agree more. We need to be challenged every day. We need to challenge each other. We can't have groupthink, um, because if we don't challenge other, uh, each other, nothing will ever change. Nothing will ever change for the better. I'm not saying that we should 
all end up in arguments. That won't be the case. Sometimes arguments are healthy as well, but we need to keep on challenging each other in terms of what we do. But I suppose in terms of the journey piece, I mean, I think that follows naturally into a person's journey when help is required. It's their journey to recovery. But how do we get there? How do we build recovery-focused services, but also how do we intervene before, uh, with those individuals before the secondary or specialist services are required? And I think that's the key bit, really. We shouldn't have to always resort, and we don't, but we shouldn't have to resort and rely on the acute, the acute bed at the end of the equation. So we need to shift the focus ourselves from, you know, in a, all the way through, and as Margaret spoke eloquently the other night at our launching for Connecting for Life about removing that stigma, the conversation is certainly changing. We've we started that conversation, but we're not there yet. We're a long way away yet in terms of removing that stigma. And we need to keep on shifting that focus in terms of, you know, changing our behaviours, community wellness projects, all these sort of issues that Healthy Ireland and my colleagues in health and wellbeing are starting to challenge as well. How do we work together to produce that? That will enable people's recovery, that will stop people requiring specialist care. How do we intervene at a primary care level across the health service? And that's a key message as well. A lot of good work can be seen here today. We heard about it today. We see the stands at the back of the room, which you know is a credit to everybody who's involved in the projects that are there. But so much good work has been put into the journey, in, you know, as we, as the service providers, in developing recovery uh, focused services. CHO7 has a lot of work to do. I'll be the first one to admit that. But the conversation is, is more than healthy, to say the least. It's about, again, how we challenge each other to get what's right for the service provider at the end of the day. How do we do that? We do that by listening to them. We listen to their family members, the carers, which is exactly what you know we're here today for. Mental health engagement is without a shadow of a doubt and, and meaningful, meaningful input by service users. Um, you know How we deal with them, how we listen to them, and how they listen to us. Again, one of the advantages and disadvantages in terms of the, the workshop earlier is managing the expectation on both sides. What can we provide? How can we provide it? The person with the lived experience is hugely important in being able to shape and define what services uh, we need to provide, how we need to provide it. I have a very basic value myself. How would I want my loved one looked after, be it from a mental health service, be it from a residential service, be it from acute service, right from the person who meets the person at the referral stage, all the way through that journey, at whatever service level it is. And that's my expectation from everybody. And I think everybody should expect that. And it's only when sometimes it's on, on the other side of the equation, being in the receipt of the service, they realise going, I never thought of that. So while co-production lived experience is key, we need the organisational commitment to be the delivery of the recovery-oriented practices. So how do we do that? The conversations have changed, there's absolutely no doubts about it. And we need to work with the relevant people, the Catherine Brogans of this world, the Martin Rogans, in terms of providing the best services we can for, for everybody. But it's also asking our services uh, as well, and our service providers, in terms of going, okay, you're doing things this way today, do we need to change it? And ask the question, why do we need to change it? The more service user involvement we have in that ourselves, and again, I can only reflect on my area, that will help shape that discussion. So we must continue along that road. Some will embrace it quicker than others. As a head of service, I need to be a key part of that co-produced solutions that will support services users and family members to contribute, but also to create that environment, and this is the key bit, that frees time up for staff who are already overstretched to be part of that change that needs to happen. Sometimes it's, it's difficult for staff to go on the Monday to Friday and sort of go, we're going to have another meeting about ARI, another meeting about something else, another meeting about something else. So we need to sort of start shaping that discussion and organising ourselves on what's right and how it will deliver for CHO7. And again, I can only speak for us. Again, there's such fantastic examples of co-produced recovery-oriented services that we need to continue to build on. Ari, recovery, it shouldn't be a label. It needs to be part of our everyday work practices, support those who we all want to the best for. 
Folks, thank you very much for an excellent day. Uh, wish you all the best, safe journey home, and thanks for all the hard work that you did today. Thank you.